Oh, okay. All right, everyone. Welcome back to Elevate Your Eight. I'm your host, Chris McPeak, and I am joined today by Lily Cloud, who is the founder of Blue Feet. And Blue Feet is an organization that helps people uncover, discover, and sometimes recover what makes them unique, gives them the tools and training to communicate that. And Lily and I met, oh my gosh, like oh, it's been four years, I think. When uh -oh. we, Yeah, maybe. We brought her to campus to speak to some student leaders. So it's really great to see you again. And thank you for being here. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. I'm glad to be reconnected. I know. I love it. It's so special to, um, to meet somebody in a student services setting and then to, to get back with them. And I always love doing that. That always makes me super happy. Okay. Well, let's get started. Tell us about your business. Tell us about Blue Feet and how you support career professionals. So I call what I do career marketing. Okay. So personal branding, some people call it like career coaching, but fundamentally I am a marketing and communications consultant and trainer and I have been my entire career. And I, in 2007, I decided that I could take all of these skills and experience of working with big Fortune 500 companies and communications coaching with luminaries and CEOs and all this all these skills that I use to essentially, essentially differentiate um, an organization and work with people, work with individuals. And the goal and the result of that is that not that you're like packaged like in a box, but right. that you actually become more yourself than perhaps you ever have been. And so it is really fun really, really satisfying. It's such, um, it's such an honor to learn about people's career journeys and to really help, I say, I think you said it in my bio, uncover, discover, and sometimes recover. Absolutely. What makes you extraordinary? Because sometimes, you know, we've had some bad career experiences or things like that, and we have to get back in touch with. And people come out with more confidence and content to go out and communicate about themselves, about Yes, a resume, a bio, you know, the, these tactical things, but most importantly, I focus on why you, why are you the person to do this awesome. more than anyone else? And what is in your DNA? What is different about you than anybody else? You might call that a USP, a unique selling proposition or something like that, but it's really about who you are, what's your why and how you do things. I love that. And I think that what you do is needed right now so much more than ever because there's so many people out there who were furloughed or laid off and maybe thinking like it's time to reinvent themselves and it's time to forage into, into new territory. So yeah, I think your, your skills, your, um, your special gifts are, are needed more than ever. Yes. And I, I went through the recession with, so I started Blue Feet, which is a metaphor for what makes you extraordinary. It's named after the blue-footed boobies of the Galapagos Islands. That's right. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Who have these extraordinary blue feet um, that attract mates to help them be successful and achieve their potential. And my goal is to help people figure out what their blue feet are, what makes them extraordinary, and share that. And I started in 2007, and then the recession hit about a year or two later. Yep. And there was a lot of people trying to reinvent themselves, needing to figure out what makes them extraordinary. And that's when I first started doing workshops for individuals. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, let's, let's talk a little bit about the, the current scenario. Um, what are you seeing in the world right now in terms of career professionals dealing with the pandemic through working from home, through, through losing their job, et cetera, things of that nature? A lack of momentum. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I hope that's changing a little bit now. But uh, fundamentally, a lack of momentum. So a few weeks ago, I did a seven-day challenge called Chaos to Catalyst. How to envision, plan, and take control of your career. And I did that because um, it seemed like 
the right time because so many people have just kind of been in this, myself included to some extent, you know, in this like, not, we don't know how to move forward exactly. Some people don't have jobs. Some people were reconsidering like what's really important in my life. Yeah. You know, as it's almost like a, a stalled cocoon. Yeah, that's interesting. A stalled cocoon. I like that. Like we're stuck in the cocoon phase or got sent back to it because yeah. of the pandemic. You're right. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. <laughs> that just came right up. <laughs> yeah. And so people, and, and I learned a number of years ago, so I help people go for it, right? Like whatever they want. But I also yeah. learned that not everybody knows what they want necessarily. And I think it's important to get really, really clear on that. And so that in itself, like knowing what you want and then think, taking, thinking of some action steps you can take, that's what's going to, to basically we have to self-generate our momentum right now. Yes. And that's a challenge for a lot of people, especially when the world is just wide open. And so I did this challenge and sure enough, that is what I saw is that people were kind of like, I'm kind of stalled and, you know, and there's things about my career that have been bugging me anyway. And, you know, and so, um, but it's really challenging to self-generate your momentum. I've, yeah. I've been self-employed. I've run my own business for <laughs> over 15 years and I've been doing it for years and it's, it's a challenge. And so I think we need something to kind of like give us an oomph you know, create a deadline, give us a place to go. Yeah. Or even do some exploration. I, I, I find that students will get stuck in the, in the thing like, okay, well, I've been going on this accounting path for so long. I don't like it, but I've gone too far. I can't go back. Well, who says that you, you can't go back and you don't know until you ask your counselor, like, you know, how many more units would I need to have, uh, sociology degree or something like that, or, or even people who are already established career, career professionals and they got furloughed and they're like, well, you know, I'm just screwed because I can't start from scratch. Well, who says you can't? Oh. Um, if you, if you have the right resume and you have the right attitude, you can do anything you want. So. Yes, absolutely. I am a huge believer in the restart and that there's, you know, it's not too late. And I, I love telling those stories and I yeah. totally believe in that. And and that's part of if you don't, if you're just kind of in this malaise, and we do get into a career malaise from time to time. That happens, sure. and this pandemic just, I think, put a lot of us there. And, and so, yes, I, there's a wonderful exercise that I love, um, of all places, from Lululemon. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> and they are really, really big into goal setting. Besides buying a $100 pair of yoga pants there, you can also- Absolutely. Buy Right. <laughs> and I have a colleague who did this and just a, year, a number of years ago and just got her master's degree in sustainability from Harvard. Oh, fantastic. And the thing about it that really broke it open for her is that they, they don't have you do one year or five years. They do have that, but they start with a 10 year goal. Okay. 10 years, in 10 years, and this is what she said, she's like, in 10 years, I could have a PhD. Yes. It, like, in 10 years, you can be something completely different. You can have a new education. You can have ex career experience, and you can be a whole you other thing. have eight kids. <laughs> you, could. you would be very busy, but you could yeah. absolutely do that. Yeah. And so, yes, absolutely career exploration. And, and I think people are taking some time and that's part of what we did in my challenge too, is, you know, what, what do I really love? What am I good at? What do I envision for my life? And that also then gives you the clarity that you can use to gain some momentum as well. Yeah. Yeah. And even for furloughed people who aren't sure if they're going back to the previous employer, like you when you determine like, okay, I need to remind my supervisor how I add value to this company. And I think that is a great way of getting clarity. And, and in that type of exercise, you're either going to figure out like, yeah, I need to get back here because this is where I'm supposed to be. Or as you're determining how you add value, it might be like, well, yeah, it's time. It, would, it was time for a change anyway, because I don't know what I'm doing here anymore. And I think, uh, I think that happens all the time, but people are too scared to take the leap because 
we want stability and we got kids to feed or car payments and those types of things. So, um, yeah. Well, I, where did you find the Lululemon exercise? Did a client just share it with you or? You know, I found it years ago and I think it okay. was like Googling or something. I can find the link and send it to you if you want. That sounds really cool. I, yeah. I love the notion of starting with a 10 year goal because that's like thinking really, really deep and, and long term, and then sort of like when I plan a scholarship event, I pick the date that I want to have the event and I work backwards. And that's right. what a, a 10 year goal sort of, sort of sounds like, like what's the, what's the end goal and now you're going to work backwards. How do you get to that, to that place? Right. And then if you are in a situation where you say, where am I in 10 years or even where am I in a year or five years, but if you just take that time to, to look and consider then as you're trying to communicate your value, you might be going, you know, I don't think they really get my value here. Yeah. And so then you have a couple of choices. You can say, okay, I need to be better at communicating my value, which is part of what I call career marketing. Right. And, or you can also say, you know, I feel like I have communicated my value a lot, or I'm going to give it X amount of time. And if things aren't happening for me here, then I'm going to have to leave my comfort place and find a new comfortable place. Yeah. Totally. So what advice do you have for people who are out of work as a result of the pandemic? You know, the basics still apply. Okay. You can still do them. Keep networking, keep learning, keep volunteering. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that I'm so inspired by is these challenges that are out there. Um, mm -hmm. IDEO, the design company does them. And so MIT does challenges as well. There's a, there's a bunch of them out there. And I'm so inspired by those. You can go online and find things potentially that are going on in your industry that you can be a part of. So in these challenges, they're create they're they're creating brand new ideas about ways to reinvent the world mm -hmm. different industries they did one on education they did one on small business and to reinvent the world which we need so much right now i mean the yes. amazing thing there's so much hard stuff coming out of the pandemic and all of the civil the you know the racial injustice strife and everything but there sure. are amazing things happening as yeah. well and we are coming out into an amazing new world that people are inventing and you can go into a challenge and start putting in your two cents worth and find yourself with an international network that didn't exist before. That's so true. And it's just, it's just taking the time to engage and, and being an active participant. I think that's, that's all. I mean, you don't need any additional skills to do something like that. Just find something, uh, get into it and participate. Right. And there's, there may be something going on in your industry that you could volunteer for in, with another organization and everyone's doing everything virtually right now. Yep. Um, we are gradually now starting to re-enter um, and interact in person, but there's still, we're never going back to as much right. in-person interaction. Yeah. And, that, and the other thing this is a really good time for is while you're sitting on all those Zoom calls, refine, or even if it's with your family or whoever, if you're not working, this is time to refine your virtual interviewing skills because mm -hmm. yeah. that's, what, that's what companies do, right? Right. Yes. This is how they screen people is mm -hmm. they don't bring everybody into the office anymore. And they haven't been doing that for some time. Right. It's a phone call or it's a zoom call. And so this is the time to practice because it's kind of weird, as you know, you know? Yeah. And, what's your background look like? You know, is your bed in the picture? And right. <laughs> where do I look? What do I say? You know, all of those things. And yeah. so that way when it's time for the interview, you're ready to go. Yeah. That is such a good point. And I think too, like learning all the little intricacies that come with Zoom. Um, I mean, I used it before the pandemic started because I host a podcast, but for a lot of my colleagues, it was their, their first time playing around with that. And it, it's interesting watching people learn something like at the same time and 
you know, you're doing a virtual staff meeting and we're, we do check-ins every single day, which we were never a staff meeting culture before. And now it's like, I feel naked if I haven't had one. <laughs> for the day. It's like, Oh, I want to see my people. Um, but yeah. So even as much as, as face-to-face -face meetings are, are changing because of what we're going through, I'm get, having more connection with my team than I ever have before because we've made these really, really regular. And now I can't, I can't imagine a workday without them. And I kind of like that. So. And so it's easier than ever too. the barriers to like have coffee with someone now yeah. are almost zero. Right. right. I mean, time is still an issue, but you can be like, Hey, let's just have a virtual coffee. Right. Right. And, right. and I don't have to, I don't have to go anywhere. I don't have to get in my car. I don't have all that time. And it's, so it's not as much of a ask really It's like, Hey, you want to have a coffee? Or yep. this is such an awesome networking thing that I learned years ago from, um, from actually a printer back in the days when we used to print things. Oh, um, right. <laughs> remember that? <laughs> I know. I so, think it's vague. It's right there. I know it's like there somewhere, but he, so he was in sales, right? So we had to always be networking and he used to get together teams of previous colleagues. So you know, eventually people move on to different jobs and he would pull together a group from that all worked for the same company okay. that were his clients at one time. And it was such a great idea. Everybody enjoyed it. And he was the yeah. one who brought them together. I did this a few years ago for, um, for some clients of mine. One, the, the person who originally brought me in the leader, she had retired and I still was connected to all her team and everything, but they, you know, they didn't get together. And then I said, you know what, let's just do this. We're all going to come to my house. We did it at my house awesome. and, and everyone had so much fun and they were so grateful yes. to spend that time together. And it was purely a social gathering, but you can, everyone's doing it on zoom now. My sister yeah. is like, oh, I talked to our cousins. So and so and so I've never talked to those cousins. Right. <laughs> Every week she talks to them. And so yeah. that's be the, be the instigator, the activator. Yes, absolutely. Together and people will, they'll remember you for it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know if you follow country music, but Brad Paisley is one of my favorites and he's been doing these, like, I'm going to crash your, your zoom call, zoom happy hours and stuff like that. So if you get in on his text message, list he'll tell you when you know he's going to be sneaking around and if you send him a link to your zoom happy hour or whatever you're no. doing he'll he'll crash them and i've i've seen amazing oh. videos of him connecting with fans and it's just such a, such a smart thing to do that right. is awesome yeah, um, that yeah. Is we cool. invited him once he didn't come but that's okay he's on central time we're on we're on pacific time <laughs> that's okay that is cool. So you also talk a lot about mindfulness on, on the website and with your, with your team. How should people, how could people be using mindfulness right now to maintain their comfort and their quote sanity while we're working through reopening and potential second waves, things like that. I, I hear mindfulness always in terms of helping people move forward. So how, yes. do, how do we use that as a tool? One of my favorite things to talk about. So first of all, I'm going to use, I'm going to substitute the word meditation right now for mindfulness. And then sure. I'm going to make a distinction about how they go together. Okay. okay. Awesome. So people often think when they think of meditation, they think chilling out, rest and relaxation, <laughs> right? Um, actually during the recession, I remember talking to one um, um, business owner and he said, oh, how's it going? Or what are you doing? So I said, well, I'm going on a meditation retreat next week. And he was like, oh, oh, I really could use that. And I thought, <laughs> and, like, and I walked away and I thought, but you know, it's not like laying on the beach though. It's really right. not the same thing at all. Right. Um, right. It's more effortful, but with a tremendous payoff. Sure. Um, but people think of it as, and it absolutely can help reduce anxiety it can absolutely help you, you to experience relaxation, to go to sleep. I use it a lot for trying to get to sleep. Yeah. Um, to, you know, feel the rest in your body. And that is wonderful. And I absolutely recommend that. And there's another aspect of meditation, though, it, and that is focus. Yes. 
And this is more the performance aspect of it. And okay. so some people come to it and there's a lot out there when we think about the world about just the chill out version. And then there's the people who are just all about the focus. Um, and they go together because actually the focus helps you chill out. But, but this is concentration. And concentration helps us do everything better, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it is, it's it's what makes you able to get whatever it is you want to get done quickly and efficiently and effectively right we all know yeah. everybody who's working at home right now with a bunch of kids knows how important concentration is right <laughs> yeah i i have a dog like that's that's all i have to reckon with a dog and a husband <laughs> but 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 distractions can come from everywhere sure and so um especially in our hyper connected world and all of that so focus um, concentration. And this also helps us do something that we also don't do as much as we used to. And that is really when have a conversation with one person and really be connected with that person. Yes. You know, yeah. and that's, that's, that's we're hard to do. So it's a performance enhancement. Yeah. Um, now, so, and this leads to talking about the distinction. So a lot of sports teams now mm -hmm. have mindfulness slash meditation trainers, yeah. right? The Seahawks, they had one. The Lakers were one of the original ones who had them. Yeah, so, I think the Seahawks work with Michael Gervais, maybe. Does that sound right? Um, you know what? I don't know. I don't remember the name. Rich Roll has had him on his show several times. Okay. So, okay. yeah. It's, you know, athletes are doing this now because you need focus. It's about the mind game, right? Right. So you're an athlete, right? Yes. Okay. So in thinking about the distinction between meditation and mindfulness, so you want to swim faster. Would that yes. be accurate? Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. And so when you say, I want to swim faster, you don't just go get in the pool and go, I'm swimming faster today. Right. Every, I'm going to swim faster and like that will get you so far, right? Yes. Very so true. What, what are the things you do to swim faster? I... What, breathe more efficiently. I improve my stroke with high elbows. <laughs> um, I kick from my hips, rotate my hips. Those like the technique that, that goes with it, which, you know, coach husband, bless his heart. He's constantly trying to get me to fix my breathing, but uh, yeah, swimming is very technique based. So yeah, it's not just, I'm going to jump in the pool and be faster today. Today I'm going to work on my breathing. And so you, you practice a specific activity. So like for the next five laps, it's breathing maybe, or I'm really, today I'm really going to work on my hips or right. There's a certain specific activity yeah. that you're doing. You're practicing, right? Right. So if you're playing basketball, it'd be dribbling or you know, whatever. Sure. And so what happens in the world is we say now, because mindfulness is the cool thing and everyone knows we're supposed to do it, is we're like, I'm just going to be more mindful, which is the same as saying, I'm just going to swim faster. Yeah. Right? So that's so true. Yeah, absolutely. So meditation is the practice that makes you mindful. Just okay. like your breathing, your stroke practice, your techniques, those the dribbling, that is what makes you a better swimmer, basketball player, whatever it is. I and so it. it's, it's the, it is, they call it a practice for a reason. Right, right. Exactly. Exactly. So, oh, I love that analogy. And that breaks it down like so easy for everything. Um, oh yeah. Wow. I, okay. I'm excited now. <laughs> yeah, so, so it's, I mean, we, and, and the thing is, I think we put, pressure on ourselves so much when we're like, I'm just going to do this better. I'm just going to yeah. be better, which is like, that's great. But do you have a process for that? Do you right. have, how, how are you going to, to do that? And so yeah. meditating makes you more mindful. So that leads to higher concentration, which leads to having higher performance and whether it's athletics or business or whatever it is, or being a better parent or mm -hmm. partner or whatever. It also leads to sensory clarity, which is essentially helping you distinguish um, how 
a lot of things, but maybe how you feel. Oh, am I feeling yeah. anxious? Am I about to erupt? Maybe before you do. And it also makes the world a beautiful place because you actually see more beautifully and clearly and you smell, smells better. And, and then equanimity, which is a very kind of complicated, actually complicated. Yeah. I don't think I've concept. ever heard that word before. Yeah. Equanimity is, is, is really, is a core part of, of what you get out of meditation, but okay, it's, it's the ability to let something be without push and pull. So what that oh, sure. means, yeah. So it's, so the tricky part of it, I think, is that what it doesn't mean is that you never make a change in your life. So often we might say, well, you know, I'm just, I just have to accept what is right. This is the whole, which is, which is good, but that doesn't mean if it's bad, like your job is miserable, that you right. just accept that. It's that you see what really is without saying, oh, it's really not that bad or, oh, it's going to be great. Or, you know, what you, you see it, you're equanimous with, you see what it really is. And from that place of true seeing, then you are like, okay, I need to make a change because you're no longer pretending or filtering or, or whatever with it. Um, and so it can absolutely bring you a lot of peace as well that you accept whatever is. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we do have to accept that but and, and just be with that, but it also can truly help you make change as well. Oh, I love that. And I sort of feel like I just had a session with you, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad. Happy to you. be here. Feel me later. Um, okay, you and I share an absolute love for Strengths Quest from Gallup, Don Clifton, Tom Rath, Strengths Finder, Strengths Quest, whatever you call it. Um, what have you learned about yourself while getting to know your talents, et cetera? And in your opinion, why is this the absolute best personality inventory out there? Well, okay, first of all, what I've learned about myself is that I've never met a personality test I didn't like. Okay. A, I'm kind of like that too. <laughs> I am a total personality test junkie. Yeah. It's funny because years ago I was reading a, a Myers-Briggs book. I can't remember which one, but it was something about, I don't know, some in-depth thing. And a friend of mine said to me, you know, but only people with your personality type would be that into it, right? But I, I am fascinated by them and I find it both validating and empowering though. Sure. Um, and also, and this is how I use strengths with my um, strengths quest or strengths finder with my um, clients, and I use this with almost all of my clients, is it gives you a different way to talk about yourself. Mm -hmm. It's like a third party validation of who you are. So, for example, I can say, um, I'm, I'm strategic. And I could say that in an interview. Sure. And because I can see, you know, the train coming around the track before anyone even knows that, you know, there's a train. Right. right. But if I say I took this assessment that's widely used in the corporate world by the Gallup organization, and my strengths are strategic, connectedness, et cetera. Okay, now it's like an endorsement of that. It's not just my opinion. Yeah. And it gives you, instead of just, here's a list of stuff I did, like your, your list of your jobs, I have people approach their interviews and their content in a, a more strengths-based way, which yeah. is, it's like, how do I approach my work? How, you know, you can, then you can tell a story about how you're connected or how you use strengths or things like that. Like strength, like strategic has been, this is why I... I'm good at, I've done a lot of crisis communications in my career because sure. I see it before other people do. Yeah. And that's, that's, so that's how, one of the ways that I use it. So I think it is really, really good for that, for all of those reasons. Sure. Yeah. The I other love that idea of, I mean, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but as you've been talking about that, I'm seeing my resume completely redone in a strengths yeah. capacity and, and like one of two things is going to happen. Either somebody that doesn't get that assessment is going to go, well, like, I don't know who this girl thinks she's doing, but the person that is familiar with that assessment is going to see that and, and their mind will be blown. And that's such a 
great way to think about approaching a career change or a job change or pushing for a promotion, any of that stuff. It's, it's again, it's, you know, how am I adding value? Well, here's my five talents and here's what I've done that fit into them. And I mean, that is ultimately cool. <laughs> and especially for a career changer, if you're steering your career in a little different direction or a very mm -hmm. different direction, it also gives you something to talk about besides you know, I was an accountant and now I want to be, you know, a sailing instructor. I, I don't know, whatever it is, right? Right. You're able to take it out of the list of jobs and into talents, something yeah. that's innate in you yeah. that can be applied to different things. And that's really, that really opens things up. And I always tell people, so I do have people put it on their resume a lot. And I always, i source that it's, um, Gallup is very, you know, prestigious organization, very credible. Oh, yeah. And just explain if people don't know that it's widely used in the corporate world. And it, unlike DISC, um, which is also widely used in the corporate world, and then Myers-Briggs as well, it's strengths is just, I, I think it was designed to be a little more intuitive and easier to understand too. Well, yeah. And I love that it doesn't, I, I feel DISC very much so, and, and Myers-Briggs to a certain extent feels like you're being put in a box. And I hear that, I would hear that all the time from students and I'm like, well, oh, you know, I'm not really, that's not really who I am and I'm so much more unique than that. Well, guess what? Strengths Finder is a way to, I mean, develop a bunch of different combinations that you could probably write 20 books and not necessarily hit on them because not only do you have the five, but some people claim a sixth one and the order that they come in is a big deal too. And then you could go on to say, um, I'm well-rounded because my strengths cover all four of the leadership areas, um, but I'm mostly strategic. So this is how I contribute to my organization. And that's actually how we use it at, at, um, at PCC on, on my team. We look very specifically to see where everybody falls under those four domains and we try to craft projects that people are working on according to what they're good at. Um, and I, I love that it's part of our annual uh, summer retreat and we talk about, you know, how are we gonna use strengths in what's coming up this year? So it's just, it's always in the back of our minds because it's, this is how I contribute and this is what's special about me. And I, and I think that's what I love the most about it is it's probably the closest thing to being a truly unique branded assessment. Yeah, I, I, we could talk about that forever. And, and I will say, though, um, a lot of people, people love Myers-Briggs, like Myers-Briggs people are so into Myers-Briggs. So I did, um, I did a little series on this for about a week on my Facebook page, I crowdsourced like, okay, what's your strengths finder? What's your MBTI, Myers-Briggs? Yeah. What's your disc, you know? And oh my gosh, the Myers-Briggs are like, you know, yeah. <laughs> but the thing about Myers-Briggs like, is important to know for job seekers is I really don't recommend it. It was, it was popular. I know a lot of like people who got MBAs did it in the nineties and, and, yeah. and there's still some organizations that give it, but it is going out of favor. You may have read the book, the personality brokers. I don't know. Have you read that? No. Okay, really, really fascinating read. It's, let's see, it's called The Personality Brokers, The Strange History of Myers-Briggs and the Birth of Personality Testing. Oh, wow. And I had heard from some OD people that I knew that they were like, oh, Myers-Briggs. I heard this years ago and I was like, what? It's so fascinating though. Yeah. But um, it's the, sci the science is not well-respected. Oh, me. okay, okay. I mean, people who take it feel like, oh, that's me. People who like it. And they really are connected and they know their type, but I wouldn't bring it up in a job interview because it's not, um, Interesting. it's not, you may end up being in an environment where they totally are like, mm, it's not kosher anymore. Yeah. Um, and if they bring it up, I wouldn't correct them and say, you know, that that's science on that. Right. Is <laughs> you know, just, possibly work here now. <laughs> right. I just roll with it, but I would definitely, um, use strengths. I think you can use DISC as well to talk about your strengths if you haven't taken strengths assessment or strengths quest. But 
it's yeah like for all we talked about strengths finder just lends itself so well to really talk all the things that you're doing with it and i think that i'm doing with it and yeah people walk away and feel in i i i think they feel empowered and it mo most importantly it gives them another way to talk about themselves and also talk in stories right yeah yeah because that's that's how you're gonna win exactly is where it's at. specific examples when you're asked to interview question even if they're not asking you to do a scenario, but, um, you know, what would you do in the first day, first week, first month that you're on the job here? That's one of my favorite interview questions and coming up with, uh, this is what I would do. And this is what I did that was successful at my previous, um, institution or organization. Um, and I used to drive me crazy when I was a hall director and an area coordinator, when you would interview a student and they would say, you know, why do you want this position? Well, I am a people person. Mm -hmm. Okay. You've told me nothing about right. yourself. Nothing. Right. I have great leadership skills again. Okay. Well, what are they? So yeah, over the years, it's been, excuse you dog. Um, <laughs> my dog wants to be on, on the show <laughs> over the years. It's been, it's been fascinating to see students embrace that and, and roll with it because it really is, that's going to get you the job is when you're able to provide the specific tangible examples of things that you have done in the past and relate that to what, you know, again, we're adding value. So absolutely. Uh, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, Lily, where can people find you if they want to hire you, connect with you, um, learn more about what you're doing with, uh, with Bluefoot, Blue Feet. So my website is yourbluefeet.com. That's Y-O-U-R, feet like you stand on, the color blue.com. And I can also send you some links, Chris, if you have put in show notes um, sure. about um, some of the things that I mentioned with the, um, I actually have a blog on about that meditation mindfulness distinction as well. Oh, that, that's, yeah, because yeah, it's just so, it gets confusing. Um, for sure. So yeah, I have a couple of notes that I can send you. That Great. Able to post. Okay. So listen, check the show notes, people don't just blow them off. I know some of you blow them off, but don't blow them off this time. Cause it's where all the good stuff is. And I'm doing. on LinkedIn, Facebook, and, um, I'm also on Instagram and it's Lily L I L L I cloud, very unusual spelling or kind of unusual spelling. So if you're looking for me that way, L I L L I cloud like in the sky. And that really is my real name. That People is awesome. That. <laughs> <laughs> Lily, thank you so much for being on Elevate Your Eight. I really appreciate you making the time. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. All right. We are done recording.